This is the wiring diagram of a Radiola RS, a radio produced by Westinghouse for RCA in about 1923. I thought I'd go through and identify some of the major parts and then go through the circuit. This is one end of the radio, happens to be the uh, tuning end of the radio, or the antenna side of the radio. And right here is this capacitor that is connected to the antennas. This is the grid leak resistor. This is the selector rotor which tunes the radio to different stations. Here is another view of the radio where you can see all six of these coils. This is the other side of the radio and this is the tickler coil which controls the regenerative feedback or the feedback of this regenerative circuit. This shows the shield ground of the radio and this is the connections on the other side of the radio for the phone and power. Okay, another view of the radio. Here you can see tube 1 and tube 2. This is the audio transformer. This is the rheostat that controls the voltage to the filaments. Now that we have identified the major parts of this radio. Let's see how a radio signal is detected by this radio. The signals come in through the antenna. I'm just picking one of them. Goes through the antenna capacitor through another capacitor to the grid of the first tube. The grid leak resistor is there to bias that grid. Now this tube will amplify that signal and you can see it goes through a couple of coils at the bottom, then the tickler coil which controls the RF feedback, up through another capacitor to ground. And this RF signal cannot go through the audio transformer because the frequency is too high. Now the two coils down at the bottom are also radiating this RF signal. And of course it cuts across those other coils. And when you turn the selector to a station, this information or signal is fed back to the grid, causing it to amplify it even more. And of course you don't want to overdo the feedback, otherwise this radio will start transmitting. Now as far as the audio goes, the filament and the control grid are also acting like a rectifier for the RF and when that happens that's when the audio is picked off of this RF signal. Now that is also on the control grid so this tube also amplifies the audio which you can see here in red and it goes not through the capacitor to ground, but it will go through 
the audio transformer. It can't go through the RF bypass capacitor because its frequency is too low. Now this gets magnetically coupled to the next tube grid where this second tube will amplify the audio signal. This radio is designed to work with earphones. One of my great aunts told me that when they had a radio that only used earphones and there was a number of people that wanted to listen to it at the same time, they would put the earphones in a large bowl, glass bowl, to amplify the sound. And it does work, but I'm not sure if you can tell that in this video. But I thought that was a pretty neat idea. Here I have hooked up a horn speaker to this radio. It's not very loud, but it does sound a lot better. There were only a little over 4,600 of these radios made, so there's probably not too many of these around. Thanks for watching.